Good evening, everybody. It's the quarterfinals of the CIF Southern Section Toyota Championships on Channel 22 Sports. Along with Rufus Washington, I'm Lou Stowers. Rashad Haylock will be watching the Olympians, and Beto Duran will be watching the Vent of Valencia Vikings, the number seven seed. The losing your Olympians are number two, coming off a big win at Canyon Springs. Oh, you talk about a very big win, Lou, against a very good Canyon Springs team. It was a long trip, but it was well worth it. When you get out of there with a W, somehow or another, the trip back home always seems shorter. That's right. It, even though the score was not close, it certainly was a close game, wasn't it? They were a very competitive game. They were the kind of game the Olympians needed at that stage of the playoffs. They needed to get tested. They got a good test, and that should bode well the rest of the way. The number seven Vikings defeated Catella almost like a peach basket game, 37 to 36 in Anaheim, and now let's talk to Beto Duran about the Vikings. Valencia Vikings, the seventh seed from Santa Clarita, have had a couple good games here in the playoffs. They knocked off Catella, and last week it was a barn burner against that team. They beat them by one. The reason, two free throws with two seconds to go at the line. The season there, they advanced the face, losing her tonight. They're led by Lonnie Jackson. He's a six foot three sophomore, averaging 23 points a game. The only Viking player to average a double double for the team. Without him, they don't have really much of a chance tonight, Lou. Back to you. All right, thanks a lot, Beto. And uh, Lonnie Jackson, Lonnie Jackson, Lonnie Jackson. Those are the three things <laughs> that Valencia brings into Lou House. Absolutely, and that's going to be interesting whether a one-horse show can beat the ten horses that the Olympians are putting on the floor. And you know what? If you're in Vegas, that's kind of an easy bet, but it might be a sucker bet. So that's let's right. not sell these Vikings short. That's right, because Rocket Collins, the coach of the Vikings, was telling us before the game they can go nine deep as well. Well, let's talk to Rashawn Haylock to talk about the home team, the number two Olympians. Rashawn? Yeah, thanks a lot, guys. You know, the theme all season long for this losing Olympian basketball team has been defense, defense, defense. It's not going to be any different tonight as they try to slow down Valencia's Lonnie Jackson. And someone's spearheading that defense? DeLon Wright. You know, last time we were here, guys, DeLon was kind of slow by the flu, just nine points in the ball game. But in the last game, the second round game against Canyon Springs, Seven steals to go along with 16 points, eight assists, and five rebounds. You got to think losing will be ready to get after it defensively tonight. They'll have to. They'll have no choice. But one thing to look out for when you play defense as tough and as tenacious and as aggressive as losing or does, the referees. There are three officials here tonight, so that may be able to come into play tonight, guys. All right, well, thank you very much, Rashawn Haylock. You'll be watching the Olympians all night for us, and Rufus, a good point there. The officials, uh, well, they, they are not used to seeing both of these teams, so it should be a good factor. Absolutely. They're an Orange County crew, and we'll get their names in a moment. But, again, they're experienced at this level. They understand that the intensity level rises with each level of the playoffs. We're now at the quarterfinals. Two steps away, fans, two steps away from the pond, but you got to take it one step at a time. But let's face it, for this team, it's a huge accomplishment, and I can guarantee you they are focused on this game because they know their reward is a game on Friday night. That's right, and uh, most likely, well, we can't say, but Glendora is one of the combatants tonight waiting at the alternate site maybe on Friday night. But first, the Olympians have to deal with the Vikings. I'm looking forward to Donnelly Minor against Lottie Jackson. Donnelly Miner and a whole bunch of other guys. Donnelly will get the first call, you can rest assured, because that's what he does. He's the lockdown guard on their best offensive player. But as we saw uh, on Tuesday night or last Friday night, Coach Morris will throw whomever at them that needs to be, whether it's Donnelly Miner, Larry Dennis, uh, DeLon Wright, whoever he's got to throw, he's going to get a lot of different looks because one thing Reggie said, and he's told us throughout these playoffs, they don't change nothing. We do what we do, and we keep doing it. The talk is done. Let's see if they can walk the walk. The tip-off is coming up next, and the starting lineups with the number seven Valencia Vikings being hosted by the number two losing your Olympians in Division Two AA play here at the CIF Southern Section Toyota Championships on Channel 22 Sports.
Back here at Losinger High School, the Olympian gym, along with Rufus Washington, I'm Lou Stowers, and we're just about ready to introduce the players in this quarterfinal matchup of Division II AA at the CIF Southern Section Toyota Championships. And let's start with the number seven Valencia Vikings, 19 and nine overall, five and five, third in the Foothill League. They will start number 20, their Mr. Everything, Lonnie Jackson, a 6'3 sophomore guard with 55 three-pointers. Had one forward, one of their captains, number 21, Emmanuel Anumba, a 6'1 senior forward. In the middle, it'll be number 30, Toki Oshodi, a 6'2", 185 senior center. And number 30, Brennan Bernardino, the 6'3", 155-pound junior forward. And at another forward, number 42, Corey Otavka, a 6'1", 165-pound senior forward. They are coached by Rocket Collins, Greg Hayes, and James DeMumbra. The number two Olympians, 23 and five, nine and one, first in the Bailey. Number one, DeLon Wright, a 6'3 junior guard will start. Number two, Jerry Evans in the middle, a six foot seven senior forward. Number 11, Larry Dennis, a 5'8 senior guard. Number 24, Julian Wheeler, a 6'2 junior guard. There you see DeLon Wright. And number 32, the defender, the Terminator, Don Lee Minor, a 6'2 senior guard. The Olympians are coached by Reggie Morris and Mike Crumbride and Kevin Posey. There you see Don Lee Minor. He gets the task of guarding, starting off guarding their best player, and that is definitely Lonnie Jackson, as you see Jerry Evans, and that's the starting lineups for both teams. The officials for tonight, an Orange County unit, Danny Serta will be the referee, the umpires, Maurice Moore and Frank Ramondi. Reggie Morris, what's he telling his guys right now, Rufus? He's telling them, don't take these guys lightly. Again, they know what the score of um, Valencia's last game was. They know it was only a 37-36 score. Coach Posey uh, attended that game. He gave them the uh, scouting report on it. And mate, you got to guard against a little bit of cockiness. But I think what you can expect, if they jump out on these guys early, like they probably are planning to, then it could be a long night for Valencia. But if Valencia is able to control the ball in a tempo the way they did against Catella, then it could cause some pitch for the Olympians. Tokyo Shodi for the Vikings. Jerry Evans easily wins the tip, almost whacks it out of bounds and does as Larry Dennis gets it in the first turnover of the game is oops. A more unusual attempt to steal the uh, opening cap and they almost pulled it off. There's Lonnie Jackson, the lanky 6'3 sophomore. Donnelly Miner right on him, is shot from the elbow, money. So Donnelly Jackson opens up right away, wanting to show what he can do. And why not? Jerry Evans takes a baseline, lays it too hard, and won't misses everything, but he'll go to the line to shoot two. Official says Jerry was tapped on the play, and you're right, that means he'll get a chance at the pair. See him going baseline, boy, and he just laid it up completely over the other side of the rim. Now first team foul, and I'm assuming the foul was on Toki Oshodi. First one is in for Jerry. Just underway here at Lou House. Glad you joined us. CIF Southern Section Toyota Championships on Channel 22. Evans misses the second, a 73% foul shooter. Ball is brought up in a hurry on the fast break. Blocked away by Jerry Evans on the shot. That's a travel. And a travel off the steal. And the shot by Emmanuel Anuba was blocked by Jerry Evans. That one kind of easy for me, Lloyd. On Sunday, I did four games of um, <laughs> did you fifth survive? and sixth graders. Yeah, and, and you see that one all the time. Guy gets the ball, somebody gets in his path and all of a sudden he starts a stutter step, which is, which is an easy call. Julian Wheeler inbounds it to Larry Dennis. Now 
on DeLon Wright wearing number one tonight. Gets it underneath to Jerry Evans. Wow. Two Misses layups left hand and layup. Jerry Evans. But he was bothered from behind by Corey Otaka. Uh, so Jerry struggling just a little bit here in the early going with his inside game. That's two missed layups, and that one was an absolute snowbird. So that's the first foul on Otaka, second team foul. DeLon Wright going up against Otaka, a very tall, long team, and now a steal by Otaka. Hands it off to Jackson, who stops. Now Bernardino has it, over to Otaka for three. Little short, rebound by Larry Dennis, and a foul underneath that's gonna go the other way. Foul is gonna wow. be called on Emmanuel Anumba. Third yep. team foul. Three fouls here in the early going. Gosh, we've only played a minute, three seconds. That doesn't bode well for Valencia. Dennis gets it to Wright, who is right in the arms of Oshodi. Wheeler tees it up for three, just he misses. Just misses, that's, in, that's well within his range. Jackson brings it across, has over 100 turnovers. And another steal, turnover number two. Here comes Evans with a slam. <laughs> Ball comes up quickly, though. Comes up the quickly, the moment of celebration, ill time by the Olympians. And a foul on Larry Dennis. And he says, oh my goodness, what was that? Bernardino will take it out of bounds. Larry Dennis's first personal, first team foul. Be right in front of us. Emmanuel Anuba gets it into Bernardino, being guarded by Dennis on the mismatch. And Jalon Wright almost steals it away from Oshodi, dumps it down low, foul. And oh. nope, going the other way. Bucket does not count by Oshodi. They call that foul on Oshodi for player control charging. And that's a turnover, and their fourth team foul, second by my count on Oshodi. But it's kind of tough to see the hands through everyone else. Miner kicks it back outside. Over to Wheeler, baseline, puts it up. No! no. Another player control foul. Wow. And that's Maurice Orr, the official, who waves that one off. So that's two right in the uh, first quarter, not even halfway done. Corey Otavka, now that was tipped out of bounds by Jerry Evans. Does it again. Right, well, Jerry on top of the ball, everything he's doing is legal. Well, we got a moment, want to send our best wishes out to David Stroud, one of the uh, proud Viking players who is suffering from leukemia lymphoma. Is a now a traveling call, and that's the fourth turnover by the Vikings. So we're all very aware of what a cancer can do, rearing its ugly head. So, David Stroud, you've been added to the prayer train here on Channel 22 Sports. Jerry Evans kicks it out to Miner for three, just off the mark. Rebound is off to Anuba. Shot taken and made by Bernardino, his first bucket of the game, and the Vikings get the lead back. Both of these welterweights are just trying to figure each other out, and Jerry Evans with a long two. He has five points. So right now, Luther just trading jabs back and forth, trying to find that soft spot and see who's got what, and here it is. One of them is the fact that this team has a ton of turnovers, Bernardino Brennan, and that's going to force them into a timeout with five minutes exactly left and losing on their first little run at a game, leading eight to four. That's right, and that was the sixth turnover of the game. Let's go to Beto Duran after we see the replay here. Larry Dennis with a nice layup, uses the glass, drops it in. Beto. About an hour and a half separate the two schools, and we all know with the 405, you can never leave too soon. So head coach Rocky Collins put his Vikings squad on the bus at 2.30. They stopped near LAX for lunch, and he said he got here in 15 minutes. Would you believe it? Because of no traffic. He said his team practiced good yesterday. They're nice and relaxed, and they're only down four. Back to you, Lou. 
All right, Betso, and yeah, that 405, no matter if you're coming from Orange County or from the Valley, it can be treacherous and uh, got past the 605 today, and it was smooth sailing, then all of a sudden hit the 110. They don't call it the slow 05 for nothing. DeLon wow. right for three. We're at number one tonight. And here's the turnover situation coming into play, Lou. This team, even their leading player, Lonnie Jackson, had 138 turnovers, and Brennan had 85. And that left the man open with the double team, Corey Otanka. That snaps the little run there of 7-0. 4.30 left to go. Julian Wheeler weaving in and out, blocked away and turned over by the Olympians who have five turnovers themselves. Lonnie Jackson almost got the end one, but it'll go to the line for two. Donnelly Miner might get dinged for his first. Yes. Oh, what a game here. Here we got the replay there. Rufus. As you see it on the replay, heading toward the basket. Must have been the contact was behind on him. And Lonnie Jackson leading this team in foul shooting at 82%, averaging 23 points a game, 5.7 rebounds, leads with 3.4 steals, and also almost five assists a game, Lucas. Well, as I said, it's a one-pony show. I wonder if he does the laundry, too. Yeah. Eleven eight. William Overton in the ball game for the Olympians. Skips it across. And now Devontae Norton caught that out of bounds. Turns that over. So both teams with six team uh, six turnovers. Fouls are just about equal. Three team fouls for the Olympians. Four for the Vikings is Jake Kafer comes in the game, and Otavka ties up the ball yep. game with a big three. With 3.50 left to go in the first quarter, William Overton has it. Double team is in trouble, gets it out to right. Top of the key, 2 3 zone shown by the Vikings. And a long two put up by Jerry Evans with seven points here in the first quarter, Rufus. He's just spotting up and shooting. He's not worrying about whether he's in front of or behind the three-point line. Those two shots both had a foot on the line, but he never thought twice about it. Now, I just found out why Rocket Collins got his uh, nickname. <laughs> he just shot up the, uh, the, the sideline there to make a point to his players. What a nice man he is. Definitely coaches player as Kiefer tries to go up, but it's blocked wow. by Devontae Norton, who also gets dinged with his first. Devontae had to have got him with the body in the eyes of the official Danny Serta, because as we see on the replay, and that's what you see his body, because he got all ball up top. Good, good call by the official. They got a little bit of a knee up into his chest, but Devontae certainly was the stopper on Nico Brooks last Friday night at Canyon Springs. Jake Kiefer. Puts up the first one and makes it. And he is a 65% foul shooter. And now it's a one point ball game. The lefty puts it up and in. That's two points. He averages almost three a game. And it's a tie ball game with 326 left to go. Ball is put up. Court quickly by Evans from inside the key. Won't go down. Otomko with a rebound. And back come the Vikings after some pressure put on by Wheeler and Norton. Three-pointer by Kiefer. Wow. Wow, he's he right. It down. He's a 5'8", 135-pound sophomore. And that's a violation going across the timeline. And back, and it's the seventh turnover by the Olympians. Very uncharacteristic here in the first quarter with three minutes left. Very uncharacteristic, and you can sense a slight, although it's very early. We got lots of basketball left. Crowd just a little bit quiet right now, the home crowd. Jerry Evans tips the ball away from Anumba. And it'll be out of bounds. Emmanuel Anumba inbounds it. Kevin Rush, the football player, in now for the Rocket Collins and the Vikings. 
Anumba passes it off, a three-pointer in and out. That was by Kevin Rush. DeLon Wright. Overton. Wright for three. In. And that's what they can do so well, the ball movement, finding the open man. All these guys are shooters. I mentioned that in the first round of the playoffs. Every guy on this team is a scoring threat. Donnelly Miner called for the foul, and he just stares at Danny Serta and said, uh-oh, that's his second personal, Rufus. And this is where we get a little bit into what you mentioned, Lou, in terms of style of play. Officials not accustomed to seeing it, and there you see Miner taking a spot on the bench with two fouls here in the first quarter. That's going to sit him down for a while. DeAndre Ingram comes in to replace him, and a push. Was it's that on Cole Roy Roy Gordon. Gordon? Yeah. Wow. They're really calling this one close, Rufus. And that does That's not bode well for the Olympians. And now the Olympians all of a sudden are out of fouls, and there's two minutes and 19 seconds left in the first quarter. And that one's thrown away by Otavka. And Corey says, hey, hey, Wright touched it. And he says, nah, my bad. Yet another turnover forced by the Olympians. And if there is a weakness in this team, that certainly is it. Now, one of the things that Valencia is doing that I like, nice fall away jumper by Coleroy Gordon. That was. That was the best shot we've seen Roy make is that Valencia is trapping everything in the corner and now losing or picking up the defense a little bit, but not until after Jackson nails a three-pointer. And that makes it a one-point game for the Vikings. And the first three put up. Seven points. Now we have a foul. Jackson with seven points. Foul's going to go against number 34, Kevin Rush. Hit Overton on the arm on Overton's turnaround jumper. Will is a 74% foul shooter. And after the chastising I got the other night in Riverside by the head coach of the Olympians, I'm not going to say anything about foul <laughs> shooting. Even though I don't think they did a bad job. There you, there's yeah. Rocket. <laughs> the Rocket Man. Overton misses the first one. And now we have a discussion between a couple of the officials right now. There's Will. I think they were clarifying who the foul was on. It looks like they gave it to Lonnie Jackson, judging by what I saw the official Frank Ramondi indicate to the table. Okay, so we'll take it away from Kevin Rush. And Overton makes the second. He has a point, and that ties up the game at 19. Playoff basketball. Boy, you can feel the electricity in the air from the parking lot. Jackson. Now Gordon is guarding him. A three-point shot's off the mark. DeLon Wright way up high for the rebound. Being double-teamed on the trap. As Overton beats the pressure with the pass. Gordon now to go up for three. Planks it off the iron. That was a not a really good-looking not, shot. Not, not a good-looking shot. Not a good-looking transition uh, for, for the Olympians. Because what you had was you had three guys down at that end who were not ball handlers. A reverse layup try by Anuba didn't hit anything. And back comes Julian Wheeler and the Olympians. Under a minute left to go in the first. It's out of bounds. Tipped by the Vikings. Coming in is Jerry Evans and Larry Dennis. And not a moment too soon. Well, that was one Morris. of the things that Reggie realized was that he only had two ball handlers on the floor. He had DeLon Wright and Julian, uh, Julian Wheeler as his ball handlers. Decides to get a couple of extra hands out there. Larry Dennis has it, 50 seconds left to go in the first, a tie ball game. Both of these teams averaged 17 points in the first quarter throughout the year. Underneath, up and oh. under, and in, nicely done by Jerry Evans, found a seam, Rufus. Now, now the triple team in the one-man show. Oh, that Anuba was goes, and that uh, was blocked by Jerry Evans and taken away by DeLon Wright. No look pass to Dennis, <laughs> lays it in. <laughs> And just like that, the Olympians, after being tied at 19, score four quick points. Jackson, um, a block oh. called on DeLon Wright, and he just walks away. Well, he walked away, Reggie stomped away. Reggie's maintaining, directing his attention, 
to somebody else. And now he's going to ask the official, Frank Serta, what does my guy got to do? What's my guy got to do to draw the charge and foul? Because, boy, if we got that on the replay, it sure looks like the line right was there. Can we rack that up again, Tom Strick Fadden, our terrific producer director on Channel 22? There you see the kid, Lonnie Jackson. Misses the front end of the one and one. Stop the presses. Julian Wheeler sees a seam, but gets it over to Dennis from the corner. There we go, 26-19 now with three seconds left. That was a huge shot, and that ends the first quarter. What a big shot by the Olympians. That's the third time in two games, Rufus, that we've seen quarters end with a big three by the Olympians. A big, big three there. They went on the little four-nothing spurt after it was tied at 19. Went out 23-19. Jackson had an opportunity to draw him within two. Missed the front end of the one and one. They come back down in the waning seconds of the first quarter. Big three from the corner. Makes it a 26-19 game. And that was the kind of spurt. You could hear this crowd pick up because that's what they were waiting for. Let's go to Rashawn. Come on, guys. I guess you can call this Valencia team a team of road warriors. Their last two playoff games, including tonight, after all is said and done, they would have traveled 222 miles. On Friday, they were in Anaheim at Catella High School. Now, Valencia is in Valencia, which is by Six Flags Magic Mountain. Tonight, they're here in Lawndale. I asked Coach Reggie Morris if he thought that played an advantage tonight because this team had been on the road so much. He said, no, not at all. It's the playoffs. Everybody gets up for playoff time and for this little spurt here. Valencia had played this losing team pretty tough. In fact, the seven point losing margin at the end of the first quarter is their slimmest of margins in after the first quarter in these playoffs. Also, the 222 miles in comparison, guys, it's like going from here to Fresno. Back to you. All right, thanks a lot, Rashawn Haylock. Uh, Brandon Bennett in the game for the Vikings for the first time. And a seven a run put up by the Olympians to end the first quarter, Rufus. Absolutely, a big seven a run. That gives them a huge cushion. This first basket is gonna be big to start the second quarter. Larry Dennis, like a man possessed, missed the layup. And back comes Jackson after the rebound. And wow! the way by Jerry Evans on the layup try by Bernardino. And there, here comes DeAndre Ingram, misses the layup. The tip is missed by Evans, and the rebound is taken away by Oshodi. And here comes Bernardino. Travel. That's a walk. Action wow. getting wild and woolly, and for a moment, the Olympians just got a little bit over anxious. That's what that was due to. I mean, they missed a couple of absolute layups that could have extended this lead out to eight or nine, actually. Now Julian Wheeler trying to well, get it. And well, Julian says, the heck with that. Let's just make it an even 10. And that's going to force Valencia Vikings into yet another timeout. All right, so tell you what, uh, that was some shot there, as there you see Julian posted up, squaring up on the left wing. Money. And while we've got a second, let me just kind of set the table since Rashawn led into it. With regard to the next phase of the playoffs, we are at the quarterfinals tonight. The next round is the semifinals. But it looks like I'll come back to that in a moment since we've got uh, Beto Duran ready. Take it away, Beto. Quarterfinal action, nothing new for the Viking program. That's how far they got last season. The big difference, last year's starting five for head coach Rocky Collins. They've graduated, they're on in college now. This year's squad observed last year's game. A lot of the players were on the bench for them, including Lonnie Jackson. Big difference when you're watching and you're playing, as you can notice in the difference in the score. Back to you, Lou. All right, thanks a lot, Betso. And boy, I tell you what, uh, what a program Rocket has put together. You got a couple of old Olympians in the house crossed the way as Juice Beeson. Yep. It looks like, for a second, I thought that was Deshaun Freeman, but I know it's Juice because I talked to him outside before, before the game. And he's excited. He wanted to get out his own <laughs> uniform. And now that uh, is thrown away. Nine turnovers by the Vikings. To Smart move by Reggie there. A lot of folks didn't see that. Actually, the ball was being saved. The guy had saved it, but since it was still out of bounds, Reggie knocked it away, which then meant that it, it was going over to the Olympians. Now we have a 30-second timeout. 
And 6.44 left to go. Let's go back to that bracket there in the Division uh, 2 AA. I know that we have the bracket somewhere in right. the drawer there, Tom. Well, we can, there okay. we go. Rashawn was talking about the fact that Valencia has had to travel a whole lot. Well, their reward, if they're fortunate enough and lucky enough to get out of here with a W, is that they will host on Friday no matter whom they play. Well, uh, whether they play West Ranch or whether they play uh, Glendora. They, w they won the flip against Glendora, and they have the automatic against West Ranch. So that's their reward should they get a W. For the Olympians, real quick, they won the flip against West Ranch. If Glendora wins, though, they've got to go up to a neutral site at Glendora. Jerry Evans has the ball on the inbound after the turnover, the timeout, 6.35 left to go in the first half. The 10-point Olympian lead. Right now, they're in the middle of a 10-0 run. Pass is stolen away by the Vikings, and there's a player down as two Vikings ran into each other and still down in a heap, and that's uh, Toki Oshodi. And Oshodi got the win knocked out of him. Uh, I can see that when it happened. I mean, they collided in the chest, and the officials did the right thing. First of all, people will say, well, they were in the midst of a fast break. The rule is real simple, Lou. Player safety supersedes anything. That's it. Okay. That's it. There you see it. And as we watch the replay here, we're going to see the two players collide. And Oshodi collided with Anumba. And again, it was a Maori guy hit in the chest, got the wind knocked out of him. Now he has to come off the floor because his coach came out to attend to him. And coming in to replace him is Kevin Rush, the 6'1", 200 junior, 200 pound junior. He must be a defensive end or a linebacker. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, I was told he's a football player and he plays like one out on the hardwood. Ball is inbounded to Lonnie Jackson. Fires it down underneath. Bad pass thrown away by Larry Dennis. And DeLon Wright waits for everybody to come back to help him out. Wheeler from the corner. A little short. Rebound is off to Jake Kuyper. Kelfer, excuse me. Kelfer underneath to Jackson. And this is going to go wow. the other way because wow. Jackson was standing out of bounds. I know you're keeping better track of the turnovers than I am, but that's a whole slew. You got 10, I had nine, I'll take your 10. I just know it's a whole, no seriously, it's a whole bunch of them. But we could tell that when we looked at the stats for this team, that they are turnover prone. Jerry Evans for three. Wow. He, and that one he lined up on the money. And right now the Olympics starting to pull away, Lou, at 32-19. A 13-0 run right now, Rufus, since it was tied at 19. Underneath, up and under, won't go down for Anumba. And a big rebound for Evans. Overton has it whacked away and stolen by Anumba. 10 apiece now as Jackson wow. goes up for the big play-in. Or did it, didn't go in? No. Blocked they, by Evans. He has three blocks by my count, Rufus. Wow. Great pass by Julia Wheeler out. Woo! And now the route is on, Lou. It is on 35-19. They're going to be forced into another timeout soon. Akeel Quinn Whoa. with the big three that time and a foul underneath. They're calling this one Whoa. tight, tight, tighter than right. Ringo Starr's drum. The, 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 the Vikings are saying, Maurice Orr, thanks for being where you were. All right, because that one was going the other way. Yeah, I didn't see who the foul was on. Uh, uh, Julian Wheeler, probably. What do you think? I, I think you're right. Okay. Going to the line to shoot two. Lonnie Jackson with nine points. So that snaps, Rufus, the 16-0 run put up by the Olympians to get that 15-point lead, or actually 16-point before Jackson's foul shot. Absolutely. Jackson, the 82% shooter, has missed two. He missed the front end of a one and one. And now we're gonna get a foul called against Valencia. Possibly Boy. Kevin Rush. Well, that, that's that's gotta be or Jackson. Yeah. Didn't see who it was Again, called on. That's, that's, that's another time we didn't get a good indication. 
Well, I'm going to give this one to Rush. Sixth team foul now on the Vikings. And, and you know what? Overton hasn't gotten off yet. You think it's going good now. Wait, wait till he starts to get off. Bad shot by Evans. It's the side of the backboard. And back come the Vikings. And Jackson gets uh -huh. around Norton. Looks like he foul uh, ran away. Took yeah. about four or five steps, but threw it out of bounds anyway. Hit a slick spot in the highway, lost his footing, and that was all she wrote. And that's another turnover. I have 11 by my count. Yeah, that's almost like black ice out on the highway. He just went slipping and sliding all over the place. So now the three try. This one by Overton. Rebound taken by Rush, but it's stolen away by Wheeler. Oh, a late call by Maurice Orr saying, now oh, it's coming back this way. Well, Maurice Orr, knowing nor what his position had to be, got a good look at it because he was the trail official. And in his opinion, before he released the ball, he stepped out of bounds. Anumba to Corey Otanka. Now Anumba gets it back on the 2-3 zone shown briefly by the Olympians. And Jerry Evans forces the turnover. Turnover number 12 in the book. And Anumba trying to get the turnover there. But now, Akil Quinn gets fouled. And that's going to send Akil Quinn to the line. That foul, of course, is on number 42, Oteva. There you see the loose ball on the floor. And you see Oteva with the reach in foul. Looks to me like the Vikings are getting a little desperate here early with four minutes left to go in the half. But they're down by 15. Well, when somebody done picked your pocket and you're a thousand miles from home and ain't got no bank to go to, you start to get desperate too. <laughs> and the ATM card, Mom, <laughs> Mama's got the ATM card. Right. And, and that's what's <laughs> happened. These guys' pocket has gotten picked. At the Lou House, where so many great times have been had. Glad you joined us on Channel 22 Sports. Presentation of the CIF Southern Section Toyota Championship quarterfinals of Division II AA as Akeel cans both of those, has five points. So it's been a long time since this Viking team has made the field goal, Rufus. Yeah. This run is now 18 to 1, and they force Lonnie Jackson into yet another timeout. Julian Wheeler and Akeel Quinn doing the damage there as Jackson very frustrated. And I tell you what, Donley Miner has been picked up by the kids. Well, they gave him a dose of, his own of their own medicine that time in terms of here's what Valencia had been doing. With some degree of efficiency, they were trapping everything in the corners, okay? And this time, losing it decides, okay, two can play at that game. So they trapped Jackson up here in the high corner. That means they got three defenders on him. You got the sideline, actually four, sideline, division line, and two Olympians forced them into a timeout. Now this should be uh, some finish here to the second quarter. And those, I don't know if I pointed this out before the quarter started, but this is the quarter where the Olympians have been making hay all season long. You, you look at that it. and it sticks out like a sore thumb. They averaged 20 and a half points a, a game in the second quarter. Did it against Servite, did it against uh, Canyon Springs, the Cougars of Canyon Springs, and now the Vikings of Valencia, purple and gold clad, are getting a little taste of it. On the other side of the coin, of the second quarter for the Vikings is their worst. Averaging 15. Well, they better get to their best real soon. And a little bit of frustration on some of the faces of these Vikings. Jerry Evans guarding the inbound pass by Anuba. Kelfer against Devontae Norton. Kelfer being pestered by Norton, who is just a big defensive stopper. Now the ball rolls out of bounds off of the Olympians. 18 seconds left on the shot clock for Valencia, the number seven seeded team in Division II AA. And of course, the Olympians, the number two seeded team, and in the minds of some, should Air have ball. been the number one seed. Air ball. Julian Wheeler with the big finish. Kelfer was there, though, to block it away. No foul called. And now, right 
is yeah. pushed out of bounds. And finally, a foul call. We get the one and one. They're going to get the one and one. Let's see who they give it to. They're going to give it to your guy, number 42, Otava. I don't know if that's his third or not. I'm going to have to go over to the official score and get my foul straightened out at halftime with okay, 325 well, left in the half. Well, we know for sure, and you see him there. Yeah, let's you know, push not him out in the barbecue exactly. pit. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Is that barbecue lit up out there? I, I, I sure hope it is. Eh? Well, this is the Lou House, isn't you, it? You got it right. We know and it is football. The barbecue is out in the backyard. Got to get those football boosters their props <laughs> because they definitely fired up during football season. Absolutely. And you know what? They fired up the bus, too, to go on the road. So thanks a lot to the Booster Club. Let's hope they fired up that barbecue. There's Rocket. Akeel Quinn is three out of three from the line. And the Stowers jinx works again. 38 to 20. Who would have thought that? Second quarter score yeah. with 3.15 left to go in the first half. 19 to one run by the Olympians since the seven minute mark of the first quarter. Working it around, Kelfer. Gets it out to Jackson. Jackson, who's been thoroughly frustrated this half. Now bounced over to Rush. Deep in the shot clock. One second left, it won't go down, and the rebound is off to Evans. Out wow. of pass stolen by Kelfer. Puts up from the elbow, no rebound by Akeel Quinn, and it goes out of bounds. Who will get the ball? Looks like the, the official or signal that it'll be Valencia's ball. So tipped out of bounds after the Olympians had it. Will Overton comes in with 2.42 left in the half. Coming out is Quinn. Also coming in is Colroy Gordon. Julian Wheeler will take a seat. And so I'd we, love to see uh, Overton get off the schneid. Still hasn't found his rhythm yet in this game. Overton had three points against the Springs. The Cougars out of Moreno Valley the other night. Bad pass and picked up by Wright, but it's stolen back by Kelfer. Nicely done. <laughs> and Let's throws see if it away. Saw it. Okay. Oh, was it was a tip. Well, well, it went off of Colorado Gordon. I just wanted to see if the official saw it. He looked over at his partner for some help, and Danny Serta indicated, yeah, it went off the Olympians. Okay. So we got a new 35 being rung up for the Vikings as Jackson will inbound it against Colroy. Underneath and stolen away. Nope. Finally picked up by Anuba and puts it up and in for his first bucket. He averages almost 10 points a game. 38-22. That's their first bucket in how long? Since oh, the long first time. quarter? Exactly. Wow. Since it was... Uh, 19 to 16. Shot is blocked by Anumba on the uh, Colroy Gordon shot. Gordon Quick trying out. to steer the shot more than shoot the shot. Talk about steals. Wow. Nice finish. Was that Gordon? Well, that was Evans. Yes. That was Evans with the layup, yes. Jerry Evans off the dish from DeLon Wright. So coming in now, Michael Blotfelty comes in. And I believe Mr. Jackson is going to get some rest. A well-deserved rest. He's tried to carry. Well, let's see. No, Mr. Jackson isn't going to get a rest. Mr. Jackson's still out there. Okay, he's carrying the ball right now. And he's double teamed to get no help from anybody. Calls for a rush. But it's, that should be the 10 second violation, but no yeah. call. Lay up and in, right. put in by Gleb Feltley. 38 to 24, and where were the three officials right. there? And now, Colroy Gordon's calling for stepping out of bounds, or is there a foul? Foul on the play's gonna go to the line. They shoot the one and one again. They give it to number 34. That's Rush, I believe. It's his second personal. Kevin Rush. Eighth team foul. Colroy Gordon stepping up to the line to shoot the one and one. 
And gets the first one. That's three points, a 73% foul shooter. So 41 to 24. Second quarter again is the bright spot for the Olympians. And Colroy gets a sweet kiss off the glass from his fourth point. Drops a pair and makes it 42-24. 18-point ball game. And Rush trying to get it across the timeline, does. And it's stolen away and fouled by Overton and a frustration foul. Fouls on Rush again, Rush. so that's two quick fouls on Rush to go with whatever else he already had. And now that's gonna send Overton to the line to shoot a pair. Let's go to Beto Duran while uh, Overton shoots free throws. Mansfield Vikings, one, one thing they're not gonna do is quit. The big reason, they've dedicated their season to a teammate, David Strop, six foot six senior who would have helped him out, but he's battling leukemia right now. He just found out that again, he has a stage four leukemia. Speaking with Lonnie Jackson before the game, he said that there's no way this team will quit because they dedicated it to David because David would not quit. That's one thing Valencia does not do. Back to you, Lou. Thank you very much. And yet, once again, David and his family, they're loaded up on the Channel 22 Sports Prayer Train. Overton misses this one. Like I said, Overton right now having an off night, Lou, but you're right back to David Strzok. You know, it, it, it's, it's always painful when you hear about this, but certainly when it's a young person, makes it all the more uh, painful to hear, but we do wish him the best. And 42-26 as the first shot of the game was made by Oshodi. Quinn, now Wright has it. Under a minute left to go, under 40 seconds left to go. And foul on Overton as he was being bothered by either Sprago or Oshodi. And that's a team control foul, and that's why you're not shooting free throws. If you want to peek at what next year will look like for the Olympians fam, there are three guys on the floor right now that you'll see next year. Devontae Norton, DeLon Wright, and Akil Quinn. They also out there, Colroy Gordon, just a junior. That's right. And you're right, that, and, and, and my apologies to Colroy, because I actually sat down and went over that last night and looked at all the guys who were here last year, you know, because we talked about the guys who came in, but there are a few guys that have come up through the system, uh, Lou, in this program. So Jackson will go to the line on the double bonus. Makes this one. And boy, his, this has been a picture of frustration for the young 6'3 sophomore. And they're edging back in a little bit. It's a 15-point game. It's been as high as 18 at 38-20. Starting to get their groove back, although it's mostly at the line. So they'll have a little something if they can make it hold up and losing it doesn't hit one of those big end of the period three-pointers. They'll have a little something to hold on to. Jerry Evans keeps it in bounds, but it's stolen away by Gutfelty, and it's stolen back by Wheeler. Puts it up wow. and in. Nice and that's exactly what I was talking about. Boy, they give up a big basket, makes it a 16-point game, and now Jackson will try to cut into that, and he does a good job with the three-pointer. 15 points quietly for Lonnie Jackson. 44-31, Evans oh! finishes that one off. Wow. And there we have a net. It wasn't a three, no. but it was at the buzzer. And that was actually a big basket for the Olympians, that deuce, because they had cut it to a 13-point game, and that gets it back out to 15. Tell you what, Valencia's going in the, in, into their locker room and they've got a little bit of momentum on their side and a little bit of reason to come back out here to start the second half. Let's go to Rashawn Haylock. And hey, thanks a lot, guys. I'm here with Coach Morris. Coach, what is it about these second quarters here at home in these playoffs? You guys kind of open up the game a little bit. Um, I don't know. I think maybe they fill out unfamiliar opponents, and by the second quarter, they kind of know what they're up against, and we start to loosen up a little bit. Overall, the defense in the second quarter is kind of what turned it around. I know you were a little unhappy with the defensive effort in the first quarter. Um, the deep, we, we didn't do that good of a job in the first quarter, but I thought, like you said, we did a much better job in the second quarter. We kind of switched some things up, and, and we got to see if they're going to make an adjustment. 
Any speaking of adjustments, what any adjustments on your end? Uh, we made an adjustment, but we we're gonna keep that a secret, and we're gonna wait and see if we can hold on to it to the end of the game. All right, thanks a lot, coach. It's Coach Reggie Morris. Those second quarters have been magical. Rufus, as you know, last time we were here was 30 to seven, losing in the second quarter over Servite. Tonight, not not as big of a margin, 20 to 11, but still good enough to get the job done, guys. Well, I would think that 15 points is a pretty uh, nice margin at halftime, Rufus. Absolutely, it is, and it's a, again, as Coach said. They, 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 it was a little feeling out process in that first quarter because until the final minute, it was actually a 19-19 all game, the quiet, and the crowd was very subdued. But I tell you, once the Olympians went on that run, which the last time I stopped counting, it was a 21 to three run. They opened up the game and took control of it, and now it's their game to, to control for the second half. All right, Rufus, we'll be back with the uh, stats and the third quarter right after this on the CIF Southern Section Toyota Championships presented proudly by Channel 22 Sports. It's the CIF Southern Section Toyota Championships on Channel 22 Sports. Third quarter just about ready to get underway, Rufus. Let's go over the scoring of the Vikings are led by Lonnie Jackson with 13, Jake Kelfer with five, Michael Lofelti with two, two points for Emmanuel Anumba, two points for Toki Oshodi, two points for Brennan Bernardino, and five points for Corey Otanka, who's, uh, let's see, Kevin Rush is in foul trouble with three, and Lonnie Jackson also has two. Leading the way for the Olympians, Jerry Evans with 16, six points for DeLon Wright with two three-pointers, four points for Roy Gordon, seven points for Larry Dennis all in the first quarter, and one point for William Overton, six points for Akeel Quinn, five points for Julian Wheeler, and that adds up to 46. Jackson tipped by Numba, and then another try and a foul as Oshodi goes up. He'll go to the line for two with three tries there for the Vikings right off the bat. Three tries right off the bat, and that shot, uh, that foul goes against Jerry Evans as he was uh, went for the pump fake, drew the foul. That's his second and the first team foul. Oshodi now with three points, is a 51% foul shooter. So the Vikings get on the scoreboard first. And let's see if the Olympians can keep from getting bored out here. Well, he's a 51, and he makes a pair. Jackson's an 82% free throw shooter, and he missed the field. Donnelly with an ugly shot. And the rebound is off to Otanka. Jackson has it stolen away by Larry Dennis. Dennis to Evans with the left wow. hand is whacked from behind for by Oshodi, and that is his second personal. Jerry Evans knifes his way to the basket, draws the contact, he'll go to the line and shoot two at 46-33 with them scoring the first basket, making a 13-point game. This is a situation where you don't want to give this team too much hope, too much life, too much reason to believe, Lou. Well, Jerry Evans misses the first one. He is one for three from the line. And let's go to uh, Beto Duran real quick. All right, we won't go to Beto yet. We will in a moment, and Jerry Evans misses both of those foul shots. And it's little things like that, little miss free throws that open the door and give a team like this life, as you see right there. Don't be surprised to see Reggie take a timeout real soon, whereas now we've got a nine-point ball game that was 18 at one point at 38-20. And it was a 15-point halftime lead underneath to Wheeler. And that hit off the iron, Otavka, with the rebound. Jackson misses it and is tied up. And wow. stolen away, almost pulled away. Jackson hanging on for dear life, <laughs> a jump ball. Possession error faces Losinger. Favorite <laughs> Losinger has one of those, boy, the officials let, let, let him have at it pretty good before uh, giving a jump ball play. Yep. Jump ball indication, I should say. In the first half, Rufus, the officials were calling it tight. Thank you. 
Now, you need to let Lawrence Horn know, just for the record, those aren't your M&Ms. No. Otherwise, he's going to start to take it out on you. A rainbow wow. three, in and out, rebound to Jerry Evans. Has the yeah. ball stripped. Jackson is called for his third personal foul, Rufus. Third personal, now the Olympians need, need to settle down just a little bit. Even Jerry's teammates, uh, including Larry Dennis, thinking maybe starting to get just a, look, just a tad frustrated. Open up uh, kind of flat. 4-0 run put up by the Vikings to come out in the first minute and a half as Evans makes this foul shot now with 17 points. And that's a sign of a well-coached team. When you come out of the locker room, they didn't even come out and take warm-up shots. They knew what they had to do, and right now the Olympians helping in their effort because they're only one for three here on free throws. And the, uh, the freebies they're not making right now. Jackson goes around a pick, gets it underneath to Anumba. In and out, gets his own rebound, puts it up and in. Jerry Evans wisely, wisely deciding to not risk the third foul, gives up the basket, rather save the foul. Good decision by Jerry. That's right, a lot of time left in a 10-point lead. Larry Dennis. And DeLon Wright gets it to Wheeler, wheels in underneath. Nice wow. backdoor pass and finish by DeLon Wright. And that's where they beat you at. They're so good at doing all the skill things that a good basketball team should do. Kelfer getting awarded for uh, his play in the first half. Gets the start and the finish by Otaka. Otaka got away from the defense that time, sitting down in the hole by himself. His teammate caught him, gave him a nice feed for the basket. Wheeler tried to get it along the baseline to right. Maybe should have put up the rainbow, but uh, It'll be out of bounds. But yeah, Corey Otomka has four points here in the third quarter. It's been a nice spark plug. It's come out on fire. He's a senior and he knows what's on the line. Well, for all these guys that are seniors on both teams, they realize that when you get into the playoffs like this, you know, it's 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 somebody's career is going to end in one of these games. And you just hope it's not yours. DeLon Wright's shot didn't go in, and Jackson shot way high off the glass. Evans with the rebound, and back they come. <coughs> Wheeler with the big finish, spins it off the glass beautifully. Timeout on the court. Seven points for Julian Wheeler, and it's a full timeout. 51 to 39, Julian Wheeler with a pretty play. And let's go to Beto Duran. It looks like the Vikings are playing with an extra bounce in their step here in the second half just because they are. Head coach Rocket Collins told the squad, even though they were down 15 at the break, they were still into this game. Why? Because looking at the videotape, you notice that Lusinger is a streaky team. They can get really hot shooting and really cold. And you can tell that the Vikings are listening to their coach are playing good, solid defense. Back to you, Lou. Thank you very much, Beto. Well, I hate to say it, Lou, but let me just say this. I got to in terms of what Coach Rocket told his guys. Coach Rocket selling snake oil to his guys trying to keep them pumped up, okay? <laughs> Losing your last two games has scored 86 points and 84. That's, That's averaging right. 85. In three out of their last four games, they've scored over 80 points. So I don't know where the lull comes in at when you're averaging 80 some points over your last four games, you know. Well, but. the tsunami is the second quarter for the Olympians. <laughs> well, you know what, if snake oil works, why not? It worked in the uh, mortgage banking business. Right, and, and if you can get your guys to believe in it, then that's all the better for you because right now, guess what? They're on another 80 point pace. Ball is inbounded and the pressure is released by the Olympians and Anumba kind of looked around to see who's on my back. Well, there's nobody. I better get going. Zone defense, flex zone being employed man-man now by the Olympians. And the ball is whacked out of bounds by Miner, and it goes off with the fingertips of Lonnie Jackson. And Donnelly Miner's doing it again. Exactly. Donnelly picked up two quick fouls, if I'm not mistaken. That's what he's playing here in the third with the two, right? Yes, sir. 19 turnovers, and underneath the minor wow. gets the reward. That's his first bucket of the game, Rufus. Wow. Travel. Wow. Woo! 
Boy, Turnover Jerry got 20. one there. Because I got to tell you, I thought the official Jerry had a lot of jersey on that one. I thought he was getting ready to whistle for one. But instead, the official called a travel. Well, you know, these kids wear these uh, blousey outfits now. And a foul underneath. Donnelly Miner will go to the line after his layup didn't go in. But again, what they're doing in terms of the reason they're scoring now is that they're attacking the basket, just like you call the last basket was for Donnelly Miner. This time he attacks and he gets to go to the line to shoot a pair. Foul is on Jake Kelfer. His first, the team's third in the half, and Donnelly Miner trying to get the scoring going here and does. He's a 55% foul shooter. And, and to show you how deep this, this team is, for Overton to be in a slump the last two games more or less, it's kind of like Lamar Odom for the Lakers being in a slump, okay? Mm -hmm. And them, and they still pulling it out. That, that's, that's a sign of depth, if nothing else. And just imagine when he breaks out of that slump, whether it's the night or in the next game, should there be one, that's just going to strengthen their hand all the more. Larry Dennis guarding Max Summers in the game for the Vikings, who has the ball right now. Look at Larry like Velcro on Max. Otomka has the ball tipped away by Julian Reeler, and Three here comes one. Evans. Look out below. And just like that, Lewis, 339 left. They've got 57. I told you they were on another 80 point pace. Whoa. Whoa. Is that Evans with the block again? That's his fourth. Right gets run into by Emmanuel Anumba. And, and, and not only by Emmanuel Anumba, but over by his dad, Ray Wright, always in his same perch. You know, you know, some parents have certain habits, and I had a parent that's just like Ray Wright. Always sat on the top row in the gym, away from everybody else. The only person that sits with him is his dad, okay? And he sees a different game than what everybody else does, and now it's 59-39, and boy, that forces Valencia into a timeout after they have made a bit of a run, got it in the single digits. And now all of a sudden, they're back down by 20. Wow, that's the biggest lead for the Olympians, and this is the loudest I've heard this crowd. But then again, Valencia traveled a lot of people, and here we go with the Lou House chant. Yeah. William Overton stuffed in the bunny with the layup. That's his first field goal of the game. I'll tell you what, up next for either Valencia or Losinger, either Glendora or West Ranch. And we're not talking dressing either. West yeah. Ranch is the 10th seeded team. Glendora is the third seeded team. West Ranch also out of that Foothill League, just for the record, right. just as uh, Valencia was. Valencia five and five in league play. They were 19 and nine overall, which meant they went through pre-league at 14 and four. And as you see, West Ranch four and six in league play, 17 and 11 overall. And the Olympians are on a uh, nine game winning streak. They've been hot lately. I mean, what can you say? Whose house? It's Lou House, and the Vikings are learning that real quickly. Every time they think they're in it, and that's what we mentioned, they came out of the locker room. As you say, Lou had a nice little run, made it 46-39. And Jackson commits another foul, gets an elbow into the chops of DeLon Wright, but I think he'd take that every time because that's Jackson's fourth. And coming in to replace him is number 10, Michael Gottfelty. Lonnie Jackson wow. has had a court put in his game. There you see him walk it off. Well, the kid had a tall order to start with. But now that was Overton doing what Overton does and getting fouled on the plate. And that's what I talked about. You heard me say that when we were out at Canyon Springs. That's what he's best at. Clean up baskets, operating in that eight, five to eight foot uh, perimeter around the basket, picking up offensive rebounds. And you see him going back up. Saw him do that to perfection as we have in several games during the season. Glad to see that particular play for him. Corio Tomka picking up his third, Rufus. 
And ooh, did a good job of soldering iron on that one. So Corey's got to sit down. And coming out is Aaron Sprago. 6'4, 205 pound junior forward. Wow, Will misses both of those. It's a good thing they're hot from uh, everywhere but the foul line, yeah. Rufus. And, and that's very much unlike Overton on those three misses. And here again, Donald Miner with the turnover. And Don, well, Donald Miner forced the turnover. Then Donald Miner committed a turnover. Reggie Moore says, settle down, settle down. This is 94 feet, not 100 yards, pal. <laughs> exactly. But that was a good down and out pad pattern there for Donley Miner, who stole the ball. And it's stolen away again by Donley. Now he touched pass to right, right. finishes it off. And we're at 61 points for the Olympians with 235 left here in the third quarter. Now, Doc Felty is fouled after he was being watched there. Now, they caught Miner again. That's his third. Yeah. Only the second team foul there. Exactly. Now, you don't have to be good at arithmetic, as I say, to know that if you play four quarters and you got 60 after three, that means you're averaging 20 per quarter. The likelihood is you're going to score another 20 in the fourth. Jerry Evans and DeLon Wright take a seat. Julian Wheeler comes back in with Devontae Norton. Got Felty puts up a three and wow. misses it. Look That's out, a, a tackle. Foul. That was a yeah. takedown yeah. in wrestling by Emmanuel Anumba. Yeah. That one was easy to call. And that's the seventh team foul. And is that a one and one? Should be a one and one situation. Wow. On that's seven team fouls. Exactly Miner. right. So seven. he's already waiting. Seven. And, and the Olympians only have two team fouls here in the third quarter. Well, they've been too busy uh, throwing the ball in the hoop to get fouls. There's the scowl by Donley Miner. How'd you like to see that if you're a sophomore? Right. You know what? He's making hay here as a senior at Losinger. Next year he goes to West Texas to Lamar University. He's gonna be a freshman all over again. Something tells me though he's gonna be just fine there. Absolutely. Great, great defender. Can guard big guys, little guys. And that's four on Donnelly. And uh, he knows where he's gonna go. Yeah. Roy Gordon coming in. Miner will take a seat, cool his heels with 2.17 left in the third quarter. Just when Donnelly was starting to heat up. And, and that's one of those calls, Lou, again, where you've got crews from out of the area, but they do it for a reason and a good reason. And Colroy Gordon gets the block moving over and uh, blocking Emmanuel Anumba. And that's Colroy's third person. So even though we have a 22 point lead, got a lot of fouls here. I sure did, and that was the Olympians' 14 foul, but they still got a ways to go. Three point shot put up and missed, and that was by Max Summers, but it's stolen away by Got Felty. Goes up, wow. and a player control foul. Roy Gordon planting his feet and getting the charge called on Got Felty. One of the many, many intangibles that the Olympians on the defensive end are good at. As I've said, you can watch this team time and time again. They are as good a defensive team as I've ever seen at this level. Julian Wheeler, Akeel Quinn, Devontae Norton with the ball, Colroy Gordon, and Will Overton. And we have another player control foul going the other way. Has got Felty planting his feet. Devontae Norton. That big bruiser. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice little acting there by yeah. Gofelty too. He, he looked like the crash dummy. But it works. I mean, he did take the uh, brunt yeah. of Devontae Norton. And so what do they do? They simply go on the bench and bring in Larry Dennis. Three-pointer off the mark by Gofelty. And the rebound is taken by Dennis. Wants to go coast to coast. Shovels and it up. And in. And one. And that's what I'm talking about. It, again, that's the devil. You take out of Devontae Norton, you bring in Larry Dennis, and you don't miss a beat as you see Larry Dennis attack the basket on Hawthorne Lawndale's Community Cable Channel 22. 
Well, Max Summers didn't have a chance. Larry Dennis was had it in sixth gear with the turbo and overdrive. And there you see coming in is Lawrence Chandler coming in, the 6'2 senior forward. Getting this, uh, getting into the box score. Good to see Lawrence. And one is completed. Ten points for Larry Dennis tonight. 64-39. One twenty-five left to go in the third quarter. Vikings with the ball. The number seven seeded Valencia Vikings, Anunba. And the rebound is taken by Sprago. Kevin Rush is short. Rebound taken on the run by Julian Wheeler. Gordon wow. is fouled. Look out below. Is he okay? His feet went out from under him and landed right on his elbows. And, and I know there was contact on the play, but I got to tell you, I'm a little concerned about the condition of the floor because I've seen some guys take some awkward falls off of contact where whew, their feet just come out from under them. And no one's really taking care of the floor either. Don't see any. Uh, usually there's a ball boy or somebody with a towel or at least a t shirt. Coach Dion Tolliver over in the far corner. Dion and his football Olympians. They're getting ready for another run. Boy, the combination they're going to have with Tayshawn Burton and touchdown Tony Sawyer is going to be one of, one of the baddest ones in the Bay League. Man, oh man, you just got me thinking about football again. Well, I've seen so many, I, I can see. Uh, uh, well, they're here tonight. From, from, from summer league ball that down at the uh, Firecracker Classic, Gary Corker. Chandler tried to get the finish. Wheeler couldn't get it. And now we're going mm -hmm. the other way. Referee decides, and, 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 and that's usually a decision. Let's, let's just stop everything, guys. Okay, now, let me blow the whistle. Let's stop this. And, um, and, 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 and start something else. Well, they called, had to be Colroy Gordon on that one. If it is, that's his fourth. I thought they called uh, William Overton on there. But it's stolen away again. Larry yeah. Dennis is tripped. And, nope, a travel. Okay. And again, you see the manner in which he hit the floor. One thing we know for sure, and, and we do hope that they get this attended to in some form of fashion if nothing but a dusting of the floor between quarters because the situation has become just a little bit dicey. So a turnover by the Olympians with under a minute left to go in the third quarter, 65 to 39. Lead back up to 16. Three point try won't go down for Brandon Bennett. Seeing some minutes tonight. Ball goes out of bounds. It will be Vikings ball. Bennett with it, has Sprago out there with him along with Oshodi and with Felty and Kelford. Also Max Summer. Bennett with the teardrop, yeah. gets it to fall. Here's nice ball bucket. movement that time by Valencia, boy I like. I like how they handled that one. And that snapped a huge 13-0 run by the Olympians to get that big lead. Five seconds left, Larry Dennis tried to get it, but missed everything, put up by Keel uh -huh. Quinn at the buzzer. Another point at the buzzer for the Olympians. I wonder if that's part of the practice regimen. <laughs> well, well, it certainly seemed to work out that way. And we're going to see on the replay here, Akil Quinn just throws it up, hits the floor, but he throws it up, and the deuce makes it a 67-41 game. So they outscore them 19 to 10 in the quarter. Let's go over to Beto Duran. The road to the CIF playoffs, a unique one for Emmanuel Newber, number 23 for the Vikings. He was born in Nigeria, but at the age of five, his dad won the visa lottery with the entire family of Southern California so he could provide a better chance of education for his children. Because of that, Emmanuel is heading to either Cal State Northridge or Fullerton next year to study engineering. The older brother, Rafael, also played for the Vikings last season, a team that went to the quarterfinals. He's now at Fullerton studying computer science. The American dream come true. Back to you, Lou. All right, thanks a lot, Betso. 15-2 run. The Olympians ended that fourth quarter with Rufus after a 
a rusty start to things. And there you see a shell shocked Vikings bench. Absolutely. And I say so there was no, excuse 19. Excuse me, that's a post traumatic shock <laughs> syndrome. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It was actually a, ten, a 21 10 quarter in favor of the Olympians. Jerry Evans, DeLon Wright, and Akeel Quinn. Donnelly Miner and Julian Wheeler out for the fourth quarter for the Olympians against Jake Kelfer, Max Summer, Aaron Sprago, and Brandon Bennett. Sprago, his shot won't go down. Rebound is off by Evans. DeLon Wright tried to feed Wheeler coming in. He fumbles it out of bounds. So another rebound for Jerry Evans to start off the fourth. Well, is it too early, Lou, to start thinking and talking about semifinals? Well, you can, but you know I don't like to do that <laughs> until the, uh, the uh, plus size lady starts to clear her throat and look out. Jake Kelfer hits the floor hard, but he'll get uh, two shots for his reward. Okay, well, well at 26 points, 67-41 with 7.35 left, I agree, it might be a tad premature, so I'm gonna wait about one more minute, and then we can start <laughs> to talk about Friday night and where the Olympians may be. Three personal fouls on Jerry Evans, who also has 17 points on the night. Kelfer, the lefty, puts it up and in. And he has seven, uh, six points. So the Vikings start off first on the scoreboard, but boy, oh boy. The second and third quarters by the Olympians just really trash the Vikings here at Lou House. And I don't know another word to put, trying to be nice, but boy. Lonnie Jackson is on the, uh, on the bench with four fouls. Didn't even start this fourth quarter. It's so now, difficult, Lou, to prepare for this kind of depth that this team has. Wheeler. Gets it to Norton, baseline jumper, got it. <laughs> he says, I don't know who to pass to. Okay, I'll just shoot it. There you go. <laughs> and as I said, they're all shooters, so any of them are a threat, and boy, they've made it a long night for Mr. Jackson. Who took, Roy raises up for three, that won't go down. And Miner gets the ball. Miner goes up against Jackson with the left-handed layup. Donnelly Miner again wreaking havoc on the op opposition's best player and Corey Otomko with a putback. 11 points for Corey. Well, you know, you're caught in a no man's land, Lou. They want to pressure the Olympians, but uh, the Olympians are not. First of all, the pressure doesn't bother the Olympians. So, boy, you talk about a suicide play. I mean, <laughs> wow. I, I, I'm not sure. And that becomes the point, and that's the riddle that their coach is trying to solve. What do you do? Man, the way these guys break the press, you're just giving them layups. It becomes a layup drill for them. 25 turnovers on that stutter step by Lonnie Jackson. Full court pressure being shown by the Vikings. They beat it underneath, and Jerry Evans with the reverse layup. Well. What, what can I say? I told you so. And right now, it looks like they're scoring points four at a time. Jerry went up to block the, to block the sophomore shot. I think that's going to be what his third foul, if not fourth, and in the case of his fourth. Was that Jerry Evans? Was that his foul? Yeah. Okay. So eighth team foul, and that puts young Mr. Jackson to the line. He did not have a point, Rufus, in the third quarter. So no. Donnelly Miner and company just shut him down. Has two quick foul shots there with 15 points. Wow. Donnelly wow. Miner again. Wow. It's Donnelly time. Okay. Nice crossover dribble by Donnelly. Just, Donnelly just left his man, you know, cement it to the floor. Bennett with it, Bennett a junior. We're carrying on the tradition at Valencia next year, as will this young man. He'll be wearing the Viking horns next year, probably as their captain. Look out, over the top was Oshodi, but here comes Julian Wheeler. Wow. Slam home by Jerry Evans, yeah. but, but look out, 
let's see how Julian Wheeler is as he went over the top of Jake Kelford. Let's see what the call is. Julian yeah. Wheeler goes over Kelford and goes head over tea yeah. kettle, but bam. Well, they're trying to decide. Wow, if we can see that again, first of all, one more time, guys. Okay, so Jerry, Jerry's dunk, which was pretty, was for show, and it was a nice show, and the fans deserve it. Here you see Wheeler rising up, trying to escape his guy, and Jerry there with the follow dunk, but it doesn't count. Wheeler has a chance to come get to it. Jake Kelfer with his second personal, and Jerry Evans coming off with 5.37 left to go. And that might be it for Jerry because you know, he's nursing a sore left leg, left quad, and Wheeler is short on both of them. DeAndre Ingram comes in and steps on the baseline. And let's go to Beto Duran. It was a rough night for the Vikings and also for Lonnie Jackson. We said in the pregame, as he goes, the Vikings go. It was averaging 23 points coming in this ballgame, but Jackson only a sophomore going to get plenty more opportunities. He, his dad, Larry, was a standout at Taft High School. He played his college ball with Kurt Rambis at Santa Clara, and Jackson's gone over to Rambis' house in Manhattan Beach to work out with him. Not a bad way to go in your high school career. Back to you, Lou. That Rambis that Beto was talking about was Kurt, who Lonnie's daddy played with. Devontae Norton looks like looked like he was going to go up for the slam. <laughs> well, well, first of all, here's what's happened. These guys have no fear, and now they have no respect for these guys. As you see, Devontae Norton rising up. And you know. met the wrath of Corey Otkavka, and that is his fourth personal. And now Donnelly Miner yeah. talking to Lonnie Jackson. There's Corey. And a good uh oh, of there's some. Uh, we're trash talking by Corey Kavka. And that might have been five on Corey. Because he's now sat down and coming in as Tyler Gray for the first time. So Corey and, not real happy. And, and this is where the officials will earn their keep. Not that they don't from the opening tip. But you get a game in this type of situation. It's a playoff game. You're in the quarterfinal rounds. One team is getting routed by the other. The road team happens to be the one that's getting routed. Players start to get a little chippy at each other, and this is where some unfortunate things can happen. Well, this is not a good Valencia road team, Rufus. They're only four and five on the year. As Devontae now with four points after those two makes by the 84% foul shooter. Leading on this team, a long three by Jackson. That won't go anywhere but out of bounds off the mark. I don't know when the last time Lonnie Jackson made a, a he made his last shot. It was a three pointer Rufus back in the second quarter. It's been a long, long night for the kid, but we talked about that. I said that I don't understand how any team that, that features basically one player, although they claim to go eight or nine deep, and they brought some guys out on the floor and they've got some good basketball players. But let's face it, Lonnie Jackson is their star. Just could not rationalize it as the ball would go over to the Olympians that one guy could beat 10. As Roy Garden uh, had the ball held. He's the uh, probably the tallest out there along with DeAndre Ingram, the 6'4 senior, is the tallest Olympian out there. Also have Akeel Quinn, who has one more year in the Olympian uniform. Devontae Norton goes baseline, gets it to Quinn, and we have Foul going the other way, or a baseline Three second violation. violation. Three second, okay. Three second. You know, and, and let me just again mention a point. So many of the, I, I think what I like to have seen tonight is the community support. We've seen guys come over from Hawthorne, uh, Carlton Calloway, Marquis Conscious, and some others. Seen old Olympians in the house, Juice Beasley, Gary Walker, and I'm sure there are a bunch more. The football coach here. It, 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 it's a community event, you know. And the whole city of Lawndale is proud of the effort being put on in this playoff run by the losing Olympians. I think that's great. Brandon Bennett goes to the line after being fouled by Devontae Norton, his third personal, ninth team foul. Brandon gets the first on the uh, bonus try. Now has three points, a 50% foul shooter. But yeah, you're absolutely right, Rufus. It's always fun to see people fill up Lou House. This is the second, but it's put up and in by Oshodi. The uh, senior is not going quietly into the night. That's only his second bucket of the game. 
<laughs> Larry Dennis got away with a travel on that one, boy. Ingram can't finish it. Rebound is off, taken by Gray. Full court pressure. Here comes Jackson behind the back. Stops, goes, and can't finish it off to get the and one, but he'll go to the line for two shots. As he was fouled by Akeel Quinn, his first personal. But you see it on the replay. As you see, and, and the thing that, that you know you mentioned early on, Lou, about Jackson and the fact that there's no quit not only in Jackson, but in this Tower Valencia team. And they've obviously shown that, first of all, by virtue of the fact that even though you're down by 28, you've got your number one threat, your star player, still hanging in there, still thinking it can make a difference in this game. Wait till this guy gets good. 17 points very quietly, Rufus. Right. He had 16 against Catella the other night in that 37-36 peach basket contest down in Anaheim. Overton has the ball taken away from him by Anumba. And look out, Devontae Norton takes it and finished by Gordon. And, and, there, and there's your 81 points. And, and I think Coach said, well, they're, they're, the one thing about them is they're streaky. Well, they've just struck for another 80 points here in this run of the playoffs. Boy. Gray misses it and running down the rebound is Ingram. Quinn to Gordon! Yeah. Just couldn't <laughs> lay it in, but it goes out of bounds. No foul call on that one. Thought old Roy was going to throw it down. <laughs> look, at, look at Cole Roy. <laughs> well, well, Let's go to Rashawn Haylock. Hey, thanks a lot, guys. I want you to take a look at Jerry Evans' socks. Now, they're nothing more than baseball socks or baseball stirrups. Now, this, a lot of teams have done this throughout the years. This was made famous, however, by the old Westchester High School team back in 1998, some 11 years ago. That was a very talented team. That team went on to win the state championship. In fact, their entire starting five used to wear those socks. Their entire starting five made it to Division I universities led by Brandon Granville and David Bluthenthal, who went on and starred at USC with Coach Henry Bibby, led USC to an Elite Eight. Also on that team, Tony Bland. He started his first two years at Syracuse before transferring to San Diego State, guys. A little South Bay history for you, huh? How about it? Hey. Thank you very much, Rashawn. Rashawn's well, on top of everything. You know what? I did the same thing I usually do in history. I almost fell asleep. Well, I think we can start talking about the next round right now. Though. What do you think you about can. that? Yeah, okay. and now that Reggie has called off the dogs, as Jackson has his shot blocked by number 15. Wow, he, he, he's got a bunch of guys in there. we got to figure out who they are. Now Is that to DeAndre uh, DeQuincy Bradshaw, maybe? Yeah, well, we got the new numbers. I'll give them to you. Number four is Shaquille Gilbert. 33 is Chris Mossberg. We know that. 34 is Elvin Smith. 15 is DeAndre Miner. That's Donnelly's younger brother. Right. And okay. over, can't see his number right on the other side of Jackson. Chris Mossberg. Is number 14. Who's wearing number 34? Uh, Elvin Smith. And 14 is DeQuincy Bradshaw. And Jackson misses another bunny. And Elvin. Has the ball tipped away from him from behind by Tyler Gray. The 6'4 senior has been put out there by Rocket Collins, as this will be the last time they don the purple and gold. Elvin stops and brings it across the line. Now, those are some shoes Elvin's wear. Three pointer that almost hit old Ironsides, missed so badly. Blake Pensker in the ball game. Now, the shot from behind is blocked. Jackson wanted that one very badly because he has 19. He wanted to get to that 20 point mark. And number four is again Shaquille Gilbert, according to what they had in the book. And coming out of the ball game is Gilbert. Coming back in is Lawrence Chandler as the foul shot is made, both of them by Lonnie Jackson. Mossberg, oh, Mossberg, you got to take that shot, son. Come on now, that ain't your game. 
You'll pull your spot up jump shooter. Man, he's hey. Got to give Chris the business about that, man. He had his opportunity. The crowd wants him to take a shot. That's it. And Larry Chandler comes back out. And Shaquille Gilbert back in. 2.25 left to go, 83-56. And it's all over but the shouting for the Olympians. Moving on to the semifinals against either West Ranch or Glendora. And a big three throws the Viking faithful by Blake Pinkster, his first bucket of the game. 83 to 59, and a timeout called oh. by the Olympians. And, and the Olympians getting third. ready to put the littlest guy in the house on the floor, and that's going to be number 13, Lance Booker. So I'm important to the table. 24 point ball game right now with two minutes to go at 83.59. But what a night for the Olympians going to the semifinals. For the first time in quite a while, Rufus. Yeah. And now you've got Lance Booker on the floor, number 13 for the Olympians. Boy, you talk about needing a scorecard. We all do. This is our first opportunity ever to see Lance at the varsity level. And you know what? There's uh, bigger guys than Bud Carson. But you know what? <laughs> Lance Booker, I'll take him anytime. <laughs> now we have a foul. Going through the line will be number 14. To Quincy Bradshaw. Lance is introduced to the crowd. Right. But he sounds like you got a lot of girlfriends. <laughs> well, he does bear a slight resemblance to Little Romeo. And you, you know, we saw Little Romeo last year over at Hawthorne. Of course, he's now at SC. Man, talk about a packed house. That's right. <laughs> 158 left to go. Bradshaw misses both, rebound off to Tyler Gray. 83-59, Losinger Olympians. What a show put on by these Olympians, shutting down the Vikings' big gun, Lonnie Jackson, no points in the third quarter. Three-pointer by Oshodi goes off the mark. Bradshaw with the rebound, Booker brings it up, being double-teamed, gets away from everything. <laughs> nice pass. Gilbert, Gilbert gives him gets inside. That shot doesn't go, but going to the line to shoot a pair is Quincy Bradshaw. And he's a 5'11 junior. Go to the line again for two. Let's go to Rashawn Haylock. Hey, thanks a lot, guys. And Rufus, if you remember, last time we were here for the first round game against Servite, number four, Julian White, wasn't. He had a class that night at El Camino College. Now White is an exceptionally gifted student in the classroom, a GPA just under 4.0. Some of the schools he's looking at attending next year, Harvard, Stanford, guys. All right, so Julian White, apologies, is wearing number four. He's wearing number four, and that was actually my mistake. My bad on that one, as they say, that I didn't. Picked that one up because I rode him in but didn't scratch out uh, Shaquille Gilbert. So did, uh, I'm sorry, did, did Quincy make both of those? Well, it's 85 points on the board, so I think that's a good guess that he did. Well, thank you, Holmes. <laughs> I mean, I didn't know either. I, I just right. looked up at Just really <laughs> deduction. <laughs> yeah. I want to see Mossberg get off a shot. The Hounds of the Baskervilles are definitely the losing your Olympians tonight, chewing up and spitting there out you the go, Vikings. Chris. And he took it in there, didn't he? He it took is. it in there, man. You, you can't get on the board if you don't take a shot. Elvin Smith. His shirt's too big. He got lost in it and committed a foul on Michael Gottfelty. I'm going to take Chris. Chris out back and work with him on his jump shot, man. He, you know, he doesn't need to be, he doesn't need to have that attack game in his repertoire. He needs to have a jump shot, the mid-range jump shot, and be happy with that. But you're not going to meet a better kid from a better family, that's for sure. <laughs> 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 
Blotfelty with the four points. 85-61. Take one, down. Lance. Oh, Take Lance. one, baby. Thought he was going to fire off that three. Two three zone being shown by the Vikings. Hey, Mossberg. Chris, that's what Looks I'm talking good. about. That's what I'm talking about, baby. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Nothing but the bottom, baby. 88 to 61. The Olympians have a chance to get 90 if they get the ball back. And they will. A foul committed by Mossberg. Boy, he's feeling it now. Got that three. He says, here, take that. Exactly. Now the only thing that's left, Lou, is for Lance Bradshaw to put a to put a cap on this. Lance Booker, I'm sorry. Lance Booker, number 13, to put a cap on this with a shot of his own. Then I'll be ready to go home, brother. Blot Feltsy makes this foul shot. 88 to 62. Mike makes this one with six points. And here comes Booker. Stops. Crossover. He, 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 he's definitely to stay out. Coach Morris trying to get, trying to get a shot from Booker. He's wide open, ah. but it's stolen away. Under 30 seconds left to go for the Olympians to move on. No foul. Three point let him shot shoot. by Gray won't go down. Rebound put up. No by Kelfer. Gray again for three. Okay, that's okay. That gives that gives Lance one more chance. Uh oh. Mossberg. To Miner, won't go down, rebound to Mossberg. Call for it, Lance. Steps Ooh. out, no. Rebound is taken by Rush, and you can turn this one over, sign it, endorse it, and deposit it in the win column. We're going to the semifinals of the CIF Southern Section Toyota Championships with an 88-60 win over Valencia. A very game Valencia team, but a very outman Valencia team. The final margin of 22 doesn't even reflect the actual margin of difference in this game, which at one point, it was as much as 30, Lou, before it ended up being a 22-point game at 88-66. Let's go over to Rashawn Haylock with the winning coach. Not ready yet, he's just saying hello to Rocket Collins, and there's James DeMontbrew. Want to thank him very much for filling us in and letting us know all about the Vikings tonight. Well, that was the one quarter that the Vikings won. Lou, they won at 21-25. But let's face it, they kept Jackson in a long time. And down the stretch, he was playing against the short end of the Olympian bench uh, for whatever he finished up with. But having said that, the young man's very impressive. But again, this particular team, this Bay League team, the loser Olympians, Simply too strong, too much, too deep for a very game uh, squad from uh, Valencia, the Valencia Vikings. But they did make it entertaining for a while, and they hung around a lot lower than expected. They sure right? did. And the final score, once again, 88-66. The Olympians over the Vikings. Now let's go to Rashawn Haylock. Hey, thanks a lot, guys. I am here with the victorious coach, Reggie Morris. Everyone in the playoffs is a big win. Which made this one special tonight? Um, this, is the, this may be the last time we're here at home this season. So we definitely wanted to leave it with our, our fans with a good showing and play well and continue our home court advantage at 7-0 at home. So we just wanted to show our home fans what we could do. What is it about playing right here that, that has made this, uh, this, this team so strong? You mentioned the 7-0 record. Um, I think the guys just get up to play at home, especially when people come see them and support them. I think they enjoy that. The confines of their own gym are comfortable, so I think they just like playing here. And you mentioned the last time you guys be playing here this season, Jerry Evans. You, you tell me day after day, every time I talk to you, as Jerry goes, we go, so to speak. He's definitely set the tone early and often tonight with 20 points. Uh, Jerry has been, I mean, he's improved so much from this time last year. He's, he's focusing in on the little things, and he's not really worried about his scoring. He's doing what he can to help us win games, and as he goes, we go. What are your thoughts moving forward? We just want to keep playing the way we play. We need to tighten up some areas. We definitely need to work on our free throw shooting. That's two bad games in a row where we shot free throws subpar. We need to make layups, and we need to finish out and just keep playing at our tempo. Hey, congratulations on the win. Appreciate it. Thank you. It's Coach Reggie Morris losing, as he mentioned, 7-0 right here at the Lou House. They're headed to the semifinals, guys. 
All right, thank you very much, Rashawn Haylock. Good job, and uh, Reggie Morris excited about this big 88-66 win over Valencia to get to the semifinals in Division II AA. Now let's go to uh, Beto Duran with one of the Valencia Vikings. Joined by sophomore guard Lonnie Jackson. Lonnie, a tough one tonight, but you guys went up against one of the better teams in the state. Still give him a fight. Yeah, um, I think we played all right. They got us out of our game, and it, it was a fun game, but I'm kind of disappointed in the way we played today. This Lawndale squad is one that just can shoot. You said before the game you want to get them out of the game, you want to contain them. It was really hard for that tonight. Why was it so hard? Well, in the beginning of the third quarter, we, we had them playing our game. And then um, we just let it, let, we got out of our game, let us speed them up, and they just got us out of our game. So. But no matter what, though, this is the quarterfinals. You guys are a very young squad. You're a sophomore, a couple of sophomores on the team. Coming this far, coming losing her, and giving them a battle, you got to be proud of your way your team came out. Yeah, I was very happy with the way our team played, and uh, I just thank God. And, you know, it was uh, I wasn't expecting to get this far in the playoffs, and I'm thankful for, to be this far. Losing her, a great squad, going to the semifinals. What impressed you the most with them? Um, the way they... Uh, they uh, played together and they were always having fun out there. Every they play they would celebrate. I mean, it looked like they were just having fun and just playing ball. Wouldn't surprise you if they make it to the finals, would it? No, I think they're, they have a really good team and uh, it was fun playing against them. It was a good game tonight. Thanks for joining us here on Channel 22. Good luck to you in your future. Thank you, thank you. A sophomore guard, Lonnie Jackson. You're definitely going to hear a lot about him in the future years. Back to you, Lou. And also, uh, thanks, Beto Duran, but Rufus Washington uh, not only can uh, Jackson get it done on the court, but uh, he even did a crossover on Beto there, did a good job of that interview for the young kid. Absolutely, absolutely. A class act, and again, we've talked about it before, it's always hard for a losing coach or a losing player to take time to give an interview. He's very composed. I understand we've got Rayshon Haylock ready with uh, Jerry Evans. Let's go. And yeah, thanks a lot, guys. I'm with Jerry Evans. Huge win for you guys tonight. Congratulations, first of all, on the win. Did you want to come out early and set a tone? Yeah, I, mean, I wanted to come out and just do, do what I knew I could do. You know, I wasn't forcing them, but I was feeling, you know, and shoot around. I was hitting, I just came out gunning. And it was falling tonight, you know. I felt comfortable, you know. Came out, dude was playing me off a little bit, and I just felt comfortable shooting the ball. Is that, is that kind of how it works? So you're shooting around, you're shooting around before the game starts, and you can just kind of feel it, and you know it's, it's going to be one of those nights? Yes, that's how it goes. That's how it goes, yes. Um, your last time playing here at the Lou House, and the win or lose, this would have been your last game playing here. Did that have any effect on, on, on tonight's game at all? Oh, yeah, I wanted to give the crowd a little show, you know, two little dunks, but, you know, it's my last time playing on this court. It's a pleasure, you know. I'm trying to break a record here. They only won 25 games. We're trying to get 26. We're trying to get a ring. Absolutely. This is win number 24 here tonight. Your competition going forward, what is it going to take for you guys to, to, to be able to do that, to be able to pick up win number 25 and then hopefully win number 26? Teamwork, playing together, trust each other. You know, we getting, I thought we, I thought we came out a little too comfortable. The game was pretty close in the beginning, but we playing good together. You know, transition points, you know, come down, passing to the teammate, that's going to help us in the long run. And I asked you this question before, I'm going to ask you one more time. Before this season, not only what's been the difference from this year as, as, compo as compared to last year, but did you did you think before the season that this, this team could have the opportunity to be this good? Um, I didn't think we would be this good, but I knew we would be good. Last year we, was, we didn't have communication. We wasn't really, we was friends, but not friends off the court. This team right here, we friends off the court. We kicking at each other's house on weekends, and we have more of a bond. We can talk to each other and, like, give – criticism but you know like they could take it in and be like okay he, he right you know we, he know we really friends you know at the end of the day good stuff hey congratulations on the win tonight best wishes going forward jerry evans 20 wins to, or 20 wins 20 points so far tonight that's win number 24 for losinger on the season he says trying to get 25 <laughs> maybe even 26 if so that'll be at the honda center guys but so far so good this season leads losinger on their way to the semifinals, guys well, boy, that sounds real good. Uh, the Elite Eight and uh, headed to the Final Four. Absolutely, and this will be as far. This team still has the opportunity to go where no losing her team has gone. Right now, they've equaled 
Losinger's best performance under uh, Coach Reggie Morris, and that was when they made the, the semifinals in 2003, went up to Victorville, played Silverado game with Dorrell Wright. Boy, came down to the last second. Dorrell had a couple of free throws, couldn't knock him down. Me and Daddy Wright were talking about that the <laughs> other night. Having said that, here's where we are, though. That's we right. know that come Friday night, somewhere the Olympians will be playing. Fans, it's as simple as this. If West Ranch defeated uh, Glendora and they played tonight on the other side of this bracket, then Losinger gets to host at a neutral court of their choosing somewhere in the area. However, if Glendora won, there's already been a flip. Losinger would have to go up to the Glendora area. Glendora also would have to pick a neutral court somewhere in their area. We won't know all of that and how that works out until tomorrow. But here's what we do know and what everybody here and why they're reluctant to leave is excited about <laughs> is that not? we will be playing on Friday night. Now, Rashad mentioned them rings. This is the first time I've actually – and, and Coach Reg, wherever you are. <laughs> I, What's your hey ring brother? size, pal? Hey, well, let me, I, I don't know how, well, let me just say right here, Reg, right here. All right. Uh, there was there's uh, an old uh, ball coach at UCLA back in 1995 that walked up to the broadcast crew uh, in uh, Seattle and said, uh, "Sweet Lou, what's your ring size?" After UCLA defeated Arkansas back in 1995, so that would be pretty sweet. It would be sweet, and I but tell we, you, I don't like to talk about that. Now we won't, we won't. We just talk about. What's next? We'll talk again about, again, uh, this Valencia team and the big win for the Olympians in this game. Uh, they started out slow, as Reggie said when he did that halftime interview with Rashawn. Took them a little bit, a little while to figure them out, but man, once they figured them out, this is their highest scoring outburst in the playoff run, That's 88 right. points. All right. And i uh, tell you what, it was done in a hurry, too, because there was a 19-2 run put on the Vikings at the end of the first quarter and into the second half. I mean, they just blistered the Vikings coming out. As a matter of that, they torched their uh, their fur loincloths coming out of there. And then a 15 to two run put on by the Olympians after the Vikings thought that they may have uh, uh, righted the ship a little bit, so to speak. And then that uh, just spelled doom for Absolutely. the Vikings trip across uh, the hill into the Lou house. Well, the Vikings encountered the same problem, let's face it, that everybody else has encountered. But particularly, I'm, I'm going to throw out the, the, the Servite game because that, that was a true mismatch. They beat them by 48 points. But if you look at the Canyon Springs team, which was a quality team, and this Viking team was a quality team, one of the major differences is the depth of losing it. They can go so deep and every guy they bring off the bench is a contributor. They play top-notch defense, and as I've said before, everybody can score. And when you've got those type of in, those type of components in a team, it's very, very difficult to beat them. It makes you exciting to want to see the next game just to see what sure. somebody can do. Yeah, and, and it's done by players up and down the lineup here for Reggie Morris. So uh, there's maybe one, two, three players that uh, didn't score, DeAndre Ingram, Lawrence Chandler, and uh, Julian White didn't, didn't score. Uh, Chris Mossberg did. Let's go over the scoring, why don't we? All right. How about that? For the Valencia Vikings, led by Lonnie Jackson, as averaging 23 points a game, had a pretty quiet uh, 19 points, didn't score anything in the third quarter. Donnelly Miner, again, just the man on defense. Then it was seven points for Jake Kelfer. He was the, uh, actually, Corey Otavka was uh, the second leading scorer with 11 points, his last stand as a Viking. But you know what? He sure did not go quietly. He was the right. big Viking there. He looked like it, too, with that blonde Absolutely. hair flowing. And then the seven points for Jake Kelfer, just a sophomore, so he'll go along with Lawrence uh, Lonnie Jackson next year for Rocket Collins. Six points for Michael uh, Glotfelty. He's a senior. That was his last time in a uniform for Valencia High School. Four points each for Toki Oshodi, and he averages uh, about uh, nine, six points a ball game. But here's a big one here, Emmanuel Anumba, only four points, and he averages almost 10 points a ball game. Three points for Brandon Bennett, along with Blake Pinsker, and uh, three points for Tyler Gray, and two points for Brennan Bernardino, and he was shut down as well. Averages almost six points a game, only had two as he was one of the starters for Rocket Collins and the number seven Valencia Vikings who went down to Losinger tonight, 88 to 66. The number two seeded Olympians were led by, who else? Jerry Evans, their big man, the uh, McDonald's All-American nominee, and he averages uh, 
close to 15 points a game. Got 19 tonight at four block shots by my unofficial count. Then it was Larry Dennis with 10 points. Donley Miner, 10 points. All in the second half was in early foul trouble, Rufus. Uh, pretty much sat the whole second quarter down, but still uh, came back strong on the scorecard. Seven points for DeLon Wright, another strong game for him. Kind of quiet seven points, yeah. though. Four points for Devontae Norton, being the pest that he is in love. And Colroy Gordon, seven points. Five points for Akeel Quinn. Nine for Julian Wheeler. And uh, three points for Chris Mossberg. DeQuincy Bradshaw had a couple of foul shots in for uh, two points. And uh, that does it for the scoring, 88 points for the losing your Olympians, the number two Olympians. Well, we're looking for more guests, uh, I, I would imagine. I don't know if uh, Rashawn's trying to wrangle somebody else or not. Well, while he's while he's working on it, or we find out, let's talk about the, the balance in the Olympian scoring. Jerry with the 19, but you had two other guys in double figures. Uh, Julian Wheeler, who is a double figure scorer, he had nine, um, and then seven and five, along a couple of players with seven. The real player, and I talked about this during the game, and, and this is why when you look at this team, you just go, wow. You know, who's going to stop them? Because the next guy, again, um, Overton still not having the kind of game that he can have and that we've seen him have. And, man, he's due to break loose sooner or later. And, you know and when what? he breaks loose, <laughs> you know, He's wow. like a bull in a china closet there. He makes his number 12 uh, known out there, that's for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, and, and, again, that's, that's the weapons. But having said all that, Friday night, there's a new day, it's a new game, and wherever it's gonna be at, obviously we're gonna be there, but I tell you, I, I mean, the excitement just builds with every game. And I just wanna say one more time to the community and the fans here, because we saw so many players from some of the other local schools, Hawthorne, Lawndale, old Olympians from years gone by, That's who all came too. out to support yeah. the effort. And, uh, and, and, and they got a heck of a show for the effort tonight. Well, wherever the game is and on Friday night, let's hope that uh, uh, everything, uh, everybody travels out there. We get as many Olympians tonight, Friday nights, as we did tonight. Well, taking a look at the other side of the bracket, uh, a Thousand Oaks and Edison from Fountain Valley where we're playing tonight. And uh, there's three, three teams there from the Huntington Beach area. Edison. From the Sunset League. And then uh, Marina. Guess who didn't make it, though? <laughs> who got beat Tuesday? Mm -hmm. okay, got beat out. last Friday night. Okay. <laughs> that lost, that lost to Linwood, 70-69. My heart goes out, but that's another story for another day. But my two local schools, Marina and Huntington Beach, they're battling it out. That's, uh, that's like a good old Hatfield versus McCoy battle because they're only about a couple of miles away. Marina High School and Huntington Beach High School. Well, I'm glad to see Marina's good in basketball because they ain't good in football, brother. Yeah. No. no, they're not. But, uh, yeah, they've got a heck of a baseball team, though. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, uh, Rashawn Haylock says uh, there's no more interviews tonight. Yes. But okay. there's still the privilege, the honor, the recognition that everybody is waiting with bated breath for because they want to know, and the players want to know, who the Channel 22 player of the game is. Well, I want to, boy, it's a tough one tonight because, uh, like you said, it was balanced scoring. And uh, Donley Miner with 10 points all in the second half and shut down, came out in the third quarter, shut down Lonnie Jackson for no points. You have Jerry Evans with 19. And you know what? The Olympians needed every one of those as Larry Dennis, also with a big game, probably uh, shown pretty brightly tonight. You got three, at least in my mind there, that, uh, that are in the running. You, you got three that are in the running, I, boy. And we could go a lot of different ways. <laughs> I'm going to tell you the way I'm going to go, okay. though, because, because I think he was the brightest star of them all. And in this case, everybody did their job, and he just did his a little bit better. For my money, Jerry Evans and what he brought to the effort tonight because the question was going to be, you know, how did the two stars face off, uh, Lonnie Jackson and Jerry Evans? And Jackson did his thing, but Jerry more than held his own and then showed up on the defensive end, stayed out of foul trouble the entire first half, you know, I mean, when he picked up four toward the end of the game, it was inconsequential. I think he was the difference tonight. You know what? Before we make our final decision and uh, put a ribbon on this one, let's go to Rashawn Haylock with another special guest. Hey, thanks a lot, guys. I'm here with Roy Gordon. Roy, first off, how's it feel to be in the semifinals? It feels great. We, uh, we want to win. We want to do it for the people that, like, got there. So, like, we're doing it for the people that played in the program before. So, like, it's a lot on us. So, we want to win it. 
I got to talk to you about the pregame routine. You guys right here in the circle at the Lou House. You're in the circle in the middle of the thing with a Batman cape. What, what's up with that, man? Because Batman come out at night and he, and he ki uh, kills all the enemies. So we're taking out all the enemies and I have to uh, bring that in the middle. So we're taking out enemies. Just like y'all did tonight against Valencia, right? Basically. Right, here's a proposition. You think I can do it Friday night? Yeah, no doubt. Hey, Lou, Rufus, what do you guys think, huh? Hey. You are the mayor, Rishon. <laughs> Robin. You know Batman, but you are a Robin. <laughs> That's right. Uh, the, yeah, no Commissioner Gordon for him. He is definitely <laughs> Robin with Batman over there. Thanks a lot to Roy Gordon and Rashawn Halak. Also, Beto Durant keeping an eye on the Losinger Olympians. And uh, Jerry Evans is our Channel 22 Sports CIF Southern Section Toyota Championships uh, semifinals in the double, Division uh, 2 AA Player of the Game. Well, Rufus, what do you think? Hey, I think it's time, but here's what the fans get to know. They're going to see us again come Friday night. Whether they like it or not. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put a ribbon on this one, a bow on this one, and put it under the tree. Yep, this is Lou Stowers for Rufus Washington, Beto Duran, and Rashawn Haylock, and Tom Strickfadden, and Normie, our camera person right here in front of us, and the rest of the terrific Channel 22 sports crew telling you once again the score from Lou House. The Olympians advance to the semifinals. The number seven Olympians advance with an 88 to 66 win over the number seven Valencia Vikings, their 10th win in a row, and improve to 24 and five on the year. Until the semifinals, boy, the hair's already up in the back <laughs> of my neck, pal. So long.